Oh my god, it's like having yeah. a keyboard for this one. So my name is Matt Hart. Um, Lou's unfortunately, I confirm, I'm unfortunately a man, but Colette is very much a lady. <laughs> and uh, we're here to talk to you today about our business class partnership. Um, I work for a company called PwC, uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, I was going to say we're a firm of professional advisors, but it's a posh way of saying I'm an accountant. Um, and we are here to talk about one of the business class um, key kind of frameworks, which is leadership and governance, and a little bit about some of the work that we've done through business class, um, particularly in the leadership and governance area, with the South Leeds Academy, of which Colette will now speak. Hello. I'm the principal of uh, South Leeds Academy, which, as the name suggests, serves uh, an area in the south of Leeds, up in West Yorkshire. We have uh, 1,200 students aged 11 to 19. And as you'll appreciate, it's an inner city context that we're working in. And with that brings the challenges that you would expect uh, around social deprivation, around employment, and around aspiration as well. I've been the principal there since January, having been on secondment since September, working with a very talented group of staff there. We're within an academy chain, the School Partnership Trust Academies, and we were the first academy three years ago with the, with the SPT, which come October is likely to have 41 academies. The founding principles is that no individual is left behind, high aspirations for all, that students and staff alike. It's about identifying and realising the potential that's within all of us. This idea that irrespective of where we are, where our starting point is, we bloom where we're planted and we can all be brilliant given the right opportunities. And as I've taken over the academy, one of the things that I've set very firmly with the team, the team of staff, is that our vision is to aim as high as we can go. We aspire to becoming an outstanding academy and I've set them a deadline. 2016, watch this space, there's plenty to go at. And with that vision, one of the key drivers for us is this idea of 100% progression at post 16 and post 18. That's what's going to make the difference, 0% neat. And as we travel that journey and remember that it is a journey that we're on, it's never the finished article, as we travel that, we need to make sure that we've got the right people in place. So with our vision, if I can borrow a Walt Disney phrase that it's the team that makes the dream, we identified that, as we all know, the starting point for any real success in any context, particularly within an academy or school, is that you've got to have outstanding leadership in place first. And it's not always about going outside of your institution. It's about digging down, about identifying those real gems. Fiona talked about energy this morning. And the people that we have been looking to develop are our emerging, aspiring middle leaders. Those people whose energy, when you spend time with them, are the tiggers on your staff. Those people who are always willing to give it a go, always willing to explore something new. And they don't always automatically, immediately present themselves to you. We wanted a framework to work with PwC to help to bring on that talent and to draw that out. And the framework we chose was the National Standards for Headship. Okay, so what we actually did, there were three middle leaders at the Academy identified by Colette and her colleagues. Um, we identified these three mixture of teachers and associate staff. And we effectively organised six leadership mentoring sessions whereby leaders from my firm, from PwC, the partner group, they were able to meet on six occasions with these same three middle leaders from the school uh, and discuss and debate and very much debate various topics on leadership. Now these topics came from the National Standards for Head Teachers. So we're talking about things like shaping the future, managing the organisation, leading, learning and, and teaching, developing self and working with others, securing accountability and strengthening the community. And as it says on the slide, it was very much a collaborative approach. It was not the case where one particular party was presenting to the another. It was very much a wide-ranging kind of 
bit of a framework behind the discussion, but then it was it was at the teachers and you know my colleagues kind of behest to take it whichever way the kind of it went. It also gave you know both parties a great opportunity to reflect and really debate leadership um, within an environment you know both within education and both within a professional services firm. And I guess that kind of leads us on to our next slide, which is what worked best. Uh, I think this is me to begin with, yeah. So as I was saying, we had a fairly structured approach, which actually, you know, because we had the framework from the National Standards for Head Teachers, we had that framework of, you know, the six topics that, that were there to debate, but there was no set agenda. You know, this could be taken any way that, you know, the teachers wanted it to, the associate staff wanted to take it, or the partners wanted to take it. Um, so we were able to kind of talk around that loose agenda. Um, we got those varied perspectives. We, we used different partners each time with different experiences within PwC, but we used the same three middle leaders each time. So we've got that different perspective each time. Um, some feedback we've actually had from Colette's colleagues is actually they really valued the opportunity to, to share learnings, experiences, discussions with their peers in a completely new environment. You know, they're very busy within the academy. They often don't get a chance other than a few minutes in the corridor in the staff room. This was a few hours out of their day in a new environment to really debate some of these topics and really, really think about their careers and really think about leadership and governance. And, you know, that really is that kind of shared learning experience. The colleagues who uh, have worked very closely with this programme uh, recently, two of them have been promoted um, and I'm quite certain that one of the contributive factors was the confidence um, that has come out of the debates and the discussion and the recognition that within themselves there is a leader within them. Leadership is about having dialogue about what matters most, irrespective of what context you're working in. And talent management is essential. In my view, talent management is essential because so many of us will have entered a career at one point and then end up somewhere else. And it's the journey we make between our starting point and becoming leaders and managers, as we all are. And it's down to our leaders who've gone before us, those people who talent managed us, who spotted us and brought us on. That's why it's so important that these opportunities are available. PwC were able to offer a different lens for us for those discussions and that's really important. Within education we might be able to talk about managing the timetable, we might be able to talk about managing the day-to-day -day running of the academy. But leadership of change, leadership of curriculum development, leadership of teams, they're things that Price Waterhouse were able to explore with these individuals and it's really made a difference. And sometimes in schools, we don't recognise the place we have in the world, that difference that we make as educators, and we forget through the day to day the fact that we are professionals and that as a profession, having PwC came in, that endorsed that for us and for those colleagues. And the fact that uh, an organisation of the calibre of PwC is prepared to invest the time and the resources and the staff really adds value to us. And as a staff team, we recognise that. So we're really grateful because that has helped to uh, um, inspire our aspirations, if you like. Okay. What we're doing is differently next time. So we, like I say, we had a feedback session. I've had a feedback session both with the partners that contributed from PwC and both with Colette's colleagues at the South Leeds Academy. Um, although we, you know, everyone kind of appreciated that varied approach and kind of the different views from the varied partners from PwC, actually having some consistency throughout each session would perhaps have helped. It's probably five, ten minutes at each session where the teachers repeated once again what they did at the South Leeds Academy, which we could hopefully avoid. And also location was key. Um, for these six sessions, we held them at our offices, the PwC offices in Leeds. But actually, thinking about the next academic year, we're thinking about mixing that up and actually seeing, you know, seeing these members of staff in their environment in the academy. I think that will bring benefits to both you know, my members of you know, my colleagues and also to Colette's colleagues in terms of just seeing you know, the day-to-day -day life of an academy, it's 
a few years since some of my colleagues went to a school or an academy. Um, so I think it would be really worthwhile for, for us as well. And uh, for us as an academy, it's not so much what we do differently, it's what we do more of and how we're going to build on this. Certainly in terms of uh, governance, building it into our Governor Action Plan that we're, we're writing at the moment and offering some mentoring so that as we bring on more parents onto our governing body, which is something that we're very keen to do, we'll offer them some support as well. And certainly in terms of, of strategic planning, having this work threaded in within the uh, strategic plan for the Academy will ensure that that investment continues. Um, I would like to thank uh, Matt and PwC for the difference that they're making at South Leeds Academy because they really are making a difference to us. Thank you. Thank you.